Hi guys. Okay, welcome to Thursday. I don't know about you, but I am ready to come back into school. All right, so for writing today, we're continuing to talk about poetry. What we're going to talk about today is specifically how poems use what we call sound devices. Many poets will use rhyming words in their poems, and I know some of you in your Google document the other day said that you're going to struggle with that. No, you won't. I'll show you that there is a, um, if you Google rhyming words, it's really easy to help you out. Okay, so if that's one of your fears, don't worry about it. Okay, so then we also see Mrs. Stanza saying that the rhymes often form patterns. Um, patterns could be like um, circle square, circle square, circle square. Okay, um, in math we see patterns. Sometimes in wallpaper we see patterns. So in poetry, sometimes there's patterns, sometimes there's not. Okay, not all poetry has to have rhyme patterns. All right, so we're going to identify some rhyme patterns. All right, let's take a look at the next screen. All right, so let me first read the poem and then we'll go back and talk about labeling it. So this poem is called Good Sportsmanship. Good sportsmanship we hail, we sing. It's always pleasant when you spot it. There's only one unhappy thing you have to lose to prove you've got it by Richard Armour. Okay, so when we're talking about rhyme pattern, we need to begin by looking at the final word in each line. We have sing, it, thing, and it. Okay, and they've underlined it. The first line is always going to be labeled A. All right, first line of any poem when you're either creating a poem and we're going to use rhyme pattern or if you're trying to identify this pattern, the first line, the last word will always be labeled A. Each new sound at the end of line is given a new letter. All right, well, we have sing and it. The sing and it rhyme? No. So we're going to label it the letter B. Okay, so we know it does not rhyme with sing, so that's why we gave it letter B. Let's continue to the next screen. Same poem. Okay, now let's look at the third line. Thing. Well, thing doesn't rhyme with it, but does thing rhyme with sing? Yeah, so because it does, and we labeled this A, and it's a rhyme pattern, this will also be A. Okay, so that's why we assigned to A. Now we're going to look at the fourth word, it, and do the same thing. Does it rhyme, rhyme with sing? Nope. Does it rhyme with it? It does. Okay, it and it are the same. So we're going to label that B. Okay, so when we look at this, we're going to see that this poem has an A, B, A, B pattern because it's sing, thing, it, it. Okay, A, B, A, B. So the line one lines or rhymes with line three, line two rhymes with line four, okay, in the stanza. That's a pretty easy poem to do. All right, let's, we're going to continue because guess what? They're not always going to be that easy. Okay, so here's Mother's Nerves. This is going to be a different rhyme pattern. Let me read the poem first. My mother said, if just once more, I hear you slam that old screen door. I'll tear out my hair. I'll dive in the stove. I gave it a big bang and in she dove. Ooh, by XJ Kennedy. All right, so we know, underline the last word in each line. So we have more, door, stove, dove. You can probably already see what words rhyme. Okay, so we're going to go to the end of line one, and we know that's always going to be labeled A. Look at the end of line two, door. That rhymes with more, doesn't it? Okay, it, because it does, we're going to label that A. So right now we have an AA pattern. Okay, so we're going to do that. Now look at the third line, stove. Does that rhyme with door or more? No, it's a new word, so that's why we're going to label that B now, okay? It's not going to get an A because stove does not rhyme with these words. All right, let's continue. We're going to get that last line. So we have more and door or A, A. We already put B to stove, and we're going to look at the last word here, stove, dove. 
Well, they rhyme, right? So that's why we're going to put it a B. So this poem has an A, A, B, B pattern. Remember the first poem was an A, B, A, B pattern, okay? The really most important thing, guys, is to look at the end of each line, underline the words, each last word of every line, and then start looking to see if they rhyme. Okay, it's that simple. All right, let's look at something else here. All right, this is skyscrapers. And again, this is not going to be A, B, A, B, or A, A, B, B. It's going to be something different. So let me read the poem first. Do skyscrapers ever grow tired of holding themselves up high? Do they ever shiver on frosty nights with their tops against the sky? That's one stanza. Let's look at the second stanza. Do they feel lonely sometimes because they have grown so tall? Do they ever wish they could lie right down and never give up at all? And again, the first thing you do is you go and you underline every last word, okay, in every stanza. So you see me circling every word. And then here, okay. So we know the last word, the first line is always going to be assigned A, tired. Let's look at the second line, high. Does high rhyme with tired? Nope. So that's why we're going to give it a B. Let's look at the third line, nights. Well, does nights rhyme with tired? Nope. Does nights rhyme with high? Nope. So it's going to be letter C. Okay. So right now we have an A, B, A, B, or I'm sorry, A, B, C pattern. And we're going to look at that fourth line now. So we have tired is A, high is B, nights is C. Sky. Well, does it rhyme with tired? No. Does it rhyme with high? Ah, uh, it does. Sky and high, so we're going to put a B there because they rhyme. Let's look at the second stanza. Do they feel lonely sometimes? Well, let's go back and see if sometimes rhymes with tired. Nope. How about sometimes high? Nope. Sometimes nights? Nope. Sometimes sky? Nope. So we need to do a new letter. D. And again, guys, you just start with A and you work right up the alphabet. All right, that's pretty easy. All right, so it's a new letter, D. Well, now we're going to look at the next one, which is tall. So tall, does it rhyme with tired? Nope. How about tall with high? Nope. Tall with nights? Nope. Tall with sky? Nope. Tall with sometimes? Nope. Guess what? It's got it own letter, E. So, so far we have A, B, C, D, and E. All right, let's look at the next line. Down. Does down rhyme with tired? No. Does down rhyme with high? Nope. Does down rhyme with nights? Nope. How about down sky? Nope. Down sometimes? Nope. Down tall? Nope. Well, because it doesn't rhyme with anything yet, we got to go with the next letter, which would be F. And never give up at all. Hmm, does all rhyme with anything? Does it rhyme with tired or high or nights or sky or sometimes or tall or down? What do you think? Well, if you said it rhymes with tall, then you're right. So this poem, you know, it's only two stanzas, would have an A, B, C, B, D, E, F pattern. The only rhyme we have here is in the first stanza, line two and line four. Okay, it's that simple. And guys, if it had three stanzas, you would just continue doing the same process. Okay, you just need to, I'm telling you right now, the easiest thing to do is to underline the first or the last letter in each line. Okay, that'll make it easy for you. All right, let's look at the crocodile. How doth the little crocodile improve his shining tail and pour the waters of the Nile on every golden scale? How cheerfully he seems to grin, how neatly spread his claws, and welcomes little fishes in with gently smiling jaws. Okay, so, and again, 
they went and they underlined the last word of every line. Remember, this is the first stanza and this is the second stanza. So first line, um, last word is always A. Second line, tail. Does that rhyme with crocodile? No, so it's going to be a B. Let's go to the third line, Nile, crocodile, okay? Now, it does rhyme, okay, Nile, crocodile, right here at the end of it. So we're going to list that A. So tail, scale, what do you think is going to be on that one? Let me flip the page and see if you were correct. Ah, good, if you said B, scale does rhyme with tail. All right, let's go into the second stanza. So my last word is grin. Does grin rhyme with crocodile? How about tail? How about Nile? How about scale? Nope, so it's gonna be C. Let's think about claws. Does claws rhyme with anything? Claws crocodile? Claws tail? Claws Nile? Claws scale? Claws grin? Hmm. What letter do you think you are going to put there? Let's see. Okay, so it would be a D because it does not rhyme with anything else. All right, next line. And welcomes little fishes in. Hmm, what does this rhyme with in? Does it rhyme with crocodile? No. Does in rhyme with tail? No. What about in with Nile? No, that does not rhyme either. How about in and scale? No. How about in and grin? Yes, it does. So that's why this one is going to be C. What do you guys think about Jaws? Take a moment and look through every underlined word and think what does Jaws rhyme with? Think about what letter you're going to put there. You got it. Well, if you put D, then you're right. So this poem has an A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D pattern. If they had a third stanza, it might again go back to rhyming with these words, or it might be E, F, E, F, okay?